Americans in Florida and other southern states are dealing with the devastation brought on by powerful Hurricane Irma. Instead of focusing on the victims of the storm and figuring out how they could best help them, hosts on liberal network MSNBC instead focus their attention on complaining that people aren't talking enough about climate change. This first started when host Ali Velshai brought former EPA official Mustafa Ali onto his show Unmentioned Rush Limbaugh, saying, What do you say, Mustafa, to people who say this isn't the time for the conversation? or people like Rush Limbaugh who said this is media hype to advance a climate change agenda. Then Vilshai spoke to another guest, liberal billionaire Tom Steyer, who ranted about fossil fuel companies, of course they don't want to talk about climate change right now because they're the people who have enabled the additional problems to happen. He added, we're not just looking at Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Jose, we're also looking at record wildfires across the West. So. To me, this is like a drunk driver after an accident telling me, let's not talk about drinking and driving. Then MSNBC host brought on the network's meteorologist Bill Kerens, but instead of talking about weather, he went on a tirade about climate change, stating, it would seem to me that one of the things that's been a bit absent from the conversation the past few days, climate change. It's hard to believe that all of this can be purely coincidental. I don't want to put you on the spot as I put you on the spot. Later on, Melvin talked to fellow MSNBC host Chris Hayes and again whined about people not talking on more about Hurricane Irma in terms of climate change, complaining, there has been a part of this conversation, at least it has seemed to me there has been noticeably absent over the last few days, and I know this is a cause that is near and dear to your heart, climate change and the fact that what we are seeing play at this summer can't just be a coincidence. Do you think MSNBC needs to give up its obsession about climate change and stick to reporting about the actual emergency? Watch below. Idiot Lib Celeb Bono just said the country was built for and by dreamers. Famous U2 lead singer Bono, whose real name is Paul Hewson, is not American. However, this multimillionaire liberal celebrity evidently feels that he has the right to come to the United States and tells us what political policies we should have. Bona recently appeared on fellow liberal Jimmy Kimmel's late night show and went on a ramble about how President Donald Trump was wrong to end the DACA program that gives illegal immigrants the right to stay in the United States. Bono first tried to make a joke about Trump and North Korean dictator Kim Jong un, saying, it's a strange place we find ourselves in. It's dangerous out there when you have a little emperor there with a bad haircut and his finger on the nuclear arsenal. And a lot of people in silly costumes following me around. And then you have the dude from North Korea. He then added, every night we're reminded why we fell in love with this country. And it's not just a country, it's an idea. It's a great idea, one of the best ideas ever. But you can feel in recent times that idea get a bit twisted. Addressing DACA, he stated, and then you have the dreamers, I mean, we're Irish. We're the dreamers. This country was built for and by dreamers. If there's no room for dreamers, where are we in America? It's the American dream. Bono even changed the lyrics to U2's song Bullet the Blue Sky so that it said instead, suit and tie comes up to me. Face orange as the rose on a thorn bush slash skin as thin as an orange crush slash he's peeling off those dollar bills, ground shakes, but the children can't weep slash vaporized in a single tweet. Do you think Irishman Bono should stick to entertaining people and stay away from American politics? Watch below. George Clooney in vulgar rand if Steve Bannon licks Maya then I will underscore. George Clooney just went on a very vulgar rant against Steve Bannon. Clooney called Bannon a failed F. King screenwriter, and said that if Bannon had stayed in Hollywood then Bannon would be licking my ass for Clooney's help. I guess we now know the requirements to get Clooney in your movie. Steve Bannon is a failed F. King screenwriter, and if you've ever read, his, screenplay, it's unbelievable. Now, if he'd somehow managed miraculously to get that thing produced he'd still be in Hollywood, still making movies and licking my ass to get me to do one of his stupid-ass screenplays, said Clooney. 
I like picking fights. I like that Briet Bart News wants to have my head. I'd be ashamed 10 years from now if those Weasley little puzzes, whose voices are getting a lot higher every week as this presidency starts to look worse and worse worse still, after me, Clooney said. He went on to deny that he is an out-of-touch liberal. You know, they say I'm out of touch. You want to call me a Hollywood liberal? Come at me. I sold ladies' shoes, I sold insurance door-to-door, -door, I worked at an all-night liquor store, I cut tobacco for a living. I can change the fan belt on my car, said Clooney. I grew up in that world in Kentucky. I know every bit of that world, and I know my friends and what they believe. And I know this is not a moment in our history that we'll look back and be proud of. So if I'm not standing on the side I believe to be right, I'd be ashamed, said Karma, liberals show their ugly side in response to Eric Bowling's son's death. Eric Bowling's 19-year-old son sadly died from a drug overdose. They are determining if this was a suicide. It happened immediately after Eric Bowling ended his contract with Fox News and according to TMZ's report, Chase Bowling was facing emotional torture based on what was happening. Sources familiar with the death investigation tell TMZ. Eric Chase was destroyed by his dad's departure from Fox News Channel. Forced out because years ago Eric Sr. had texted pics of his genitalia. Sources connected with Eric Sr. tell us he actually made the decision to part ways earlier than he wanted because he knew his son was having trouble dealing with the publicity and the embarrassment, wrote TMZ. Many are blaming liberals for pushing this without much proof. Just as a way to destroy Fox News. Liberals have been adding insult to injury by attacking Eric Bowling for his son's death. It's incredible how disgusting people can be. Karma is your cheat on your wife and your son dies of drug overdose, wrote one user. Clearly sins of the father come to visit the son. The man was a dick pic sending creep. And karma just hit him twice. Good riddance, lol, wrote another. However, plenty of people were calling these disgusting people out. Majority of the liberals are so hate-filled and bitter that I fully expect them to eventually just self-destruct. Where is love trumps hate? Replied one you Hillary Clinton makes definitive statement on whether or not she will run for president again. Hillary Clinton had her first full interview since the election with CBS. During the interview she revealed definitively whether or not she will be running for president in 2020. Is your political career over? Asked the interviewer. Yes. As an active politician, it's over, said Hillary Clinton. Woo. I am done with being a candidate, she reiterated. However, she claimed that she was not done forever being political. I am not done with politics because I literally believe that our country's future is at stake, she said. We have a reality show that leads to the election of a president. He ends up in the Oval Office. He says, boy, it's so much harder than I thought it would be. This is really tough. I had no idea. Well, yeah, because it's not a show. It's real, said Hillary. She went on to claim that President Trump's inauguration speech was made for white supremacists. So there I was, on the platform, feeling like an out-of-body experience. His speech was a cry from the white nationalist gut, said Hillary. He was quite successful in referencing a nostalgia that would give hope, comfort, settle grievances for millions of people who were upset about gains that were made by others, said Hillary. Check out the interview below. Gaudi eviscerates fearful Democrats for trying to hide the truth about the dossier. Thre Gaudi called out fearful Democrats and the mainstream media for trying to hide the truth about Trump's dossier. The dossier was a made up pamphlet that went around that made tons of claims about President Trump, including that he hired prostitutes in Russia. The FBI then used this disproven pamphlet to push an investigation against President Trump. I don't know why anyone, from California Rep, Adam Schiff, to Vanity Fair, to Rachel Maddow, would not be curious whether or not the world's premier law enforcement agency relied upon a dossier in connection with an investigation without vetting it, 
said Gaudi. For the life of me I don't understand why they are focused on this, unless they are fearful that the Bureau did rely on a piece of fiction, said Gaudi. Some Democrats have alleged that Republicans are trying to unnecessarily discredit the dossier. I really don't know what in the hell they're talking about, responded Gowdy. The investigators on, the Intelligence Committee, have been trying for months to obtain documents about the dossier, but when you get no response, then you go from a polite request, to a firm request to a legal request. And if they still don't comply with it, then we're well within our rights, I've done it before, you bring in a witness and say okay, you're under oath. You need to explain to me why you don't think you need to share this, what am I missing? said Gowdy. It is relevant to ask whether or not a law enforcement agency relied on this dossier, or any evidence, without fitting it, said Gowdy. Don Jr. crushes Michael Moore for idiotic thing he said about President Trump and Irma. Michael Moore has been trying to capitalize on Trump's presidency ever since he was elected. He's been making documentaries, TV appearances and even a Broadway show. It's like Trump's presidency is the best thing that has ever happened to him. Hating Trump sells. That's why he is so willing to make dumb comments about Trump without even putting thought into it. Has he opened up Mar-a-Lago as a shelter yet? Wrote Moore criticizing Trump for not sheltering hurricane victims at Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump Jr. responded with an obvious point. It's on an island on both the ocean and intercostal and in a mandatory evacuation zone. Probably not the best idea, but you know, narrative. Wrote Don Jr. It appears that Mara wrote that tweet without having any idea where the Mar-a-Lago is. The internet loved Don Jr.'s reaction. Category 5 Delmas, wrote Kurt Schiller. The onage here is emphatic," wrote Paul Joseph Watson. National Hurricane Center says if Michael Moore could lay his fat ass on the beach in Naples he alone could stop the storm surge," wrote Joe Biggs. Michael why don't you go there and help all the people in need and stop worrying about what President Trump is doing," wrote another user. Is Michael Moore an idiot? Stupid and hard-headed Pope Francis scolds President Trump for not doing more about climate change. Pope Francis just tried to argue that you can't be against DACA and be pro-life at the same time. The President of the United States presents himself as pro-life and if he is a good pro-lifer, he understands that family is the cradle of life and its unity must be protected, said Francis of DACA. The Pope went on to admit that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He explains how he doesn't know the specifics of DECA. I think this law comes not from Parliament but from the executive if that is so, I am hopeful that it will be rethought," he said. This wasn't his only political comment of the way. He went on to preach that we must listen to what scientists have to say about climate change. If we don't go back, we will go down. Whoever denies it has to go to the scientists and ask them. They speak very clearly. Scientists are precise, said Pope Francis. Then they decide and history will judge those decisions, said Francis. He was then asked why some governments don't see the importance of the issue. Man is a stupid and hard-headed being, Francis responded. Then he was asked about North Korea. I'll tell you the truth, I don't really understand the world of geopolitics. I think what I see there is a fight for political interests, responded Francis. Watch Bannon brutally rips Hillary Clinton in the conveniently unaired portion of interview. In an interview with CBS's 60 Minutes Steve Bannon talked about a lot. At one point he hit Hillary Clinton with a series of brutal insults. This part was conveniently left out of the broadcast. But you can still see the footage. Hillary Clinton's not very bright. Everybody says she's so smart, so much smarter than Donald Trump. She doesn't really have a grasp, she doesn't have a grasp on what's important and what's not, and that's what's essential in a leader," said Bannon. Donald Trump has a grasp on what's important and what's marginalia, okay, said Bannon. The interviewer then changed the topic to people thinking he is a white nationalist. Bannon said he is not an ethno-nationalist, he is an economic nationalist. 
economic nationalism is what this country was built on. The American system, we look after our own. We look after our citizen, we look after our manufacturing base. And guess what? This country's going to be greater, more united, more powerful than it's ever been. This is not astrophysics. And by the way, that's every nationality, every race, every religion, every sexual preference, said Bannon. As long as you're an American citizen, you're part of this populist economic nationalist movement, said Bannon. Check out the video. Bowling's son is dead partially because of emotional torture from a certain liberal news network. TMZ reported on the drug overdose of Eric Bowling's son. Chase was only 19 years old and people from all sides of the political spectrum have been offering him condolences. So awful. My heart goes out to Eric and his family, wrote Don Lemon. Join me in prayers for my friend Eric Bowling, his wife Adrienne, and the soul of their beloved son Chase. May God's love sustain them, wrote Bob Beckel. It is currently being determined if this was an accidental overdose, or a suicide. TMZ suggested that some of the blame lays with the liberal news outlet The Huffington Post, for launching the vile accusations against Eric Bowling. Eric Chase Bowling, Jr. died in bed after suffering emotional torture, wrote TMZ. 12.40 p.m. PT, well-placed FNC sources tell TMZ. Eric Chase died from a drug overdose. We're told he was having a hard time dealing with the trouble his dad was having at the network. Our sources say he was extremely embarrassed by the stories and was emotionally upset, wrote TMZ. Sources familiar with the death investigation tell TMZ, Eric Chase was destroyed by his dad's departure from Fox News Channel. Forced that because years ago Eric Sr. had texted pics of his genitalia. Sources connected with Eric Sr. tell us he actually made the decision to part ways earlier than he wanted because he knew his son was having trouble dealing with the publicity and the embarrassment, wrote TMZ. When liberals launch these shameful, baseless attacks against people in order to destroy Fox News, they need to understand the awful damage that they are causing.